Welcome to Raccoon Mountain Caverns, established 1931. Let's go on a cave tour. That goes it. It's me, Jules, standing here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Home to Raccoon Mountain Caverns. I just signed up for an 11 o'clock cave tour. Got about an hour to go or so. And uh, just gonna walk around the grounds here. It's also a campground, which is behind these trees here. There's a campground. And there's this, not sure it's abandoned or if it's under construction or they're remodeling, but it's a, it's a cool looking building there. There's a trailer set up with a gift shop where you sign up for the cave tours. I'm wondering if that's maybe a temporary location. Maybe this is where the new welcome center is gonna be. It does say, excuse our mess. We're improving our facilities. Looks like it's got some age to it. I'm glad they're restoring it. I'm not sure the progress of the construction, but I'm glad they're not just demolishing it. It's a, it's a cool piece of architecture, no doubt. They've got these everywhere out here. They had one in Rock City where you could pan for gemstones and rocks and whatnot. So the stand is closed, but you can purchase tickets in the gift shop. I'm also dressed for the occasion. Got my Smooth Criminal t-shirt on today. Hand drawn by yours truly. Screen printed by yours truly. All right, looks like there's a staircase here. I can walk down to the campground here. Go check out some of the sites they've got. I see they also offer cabins. That's a nice little cabin. I would stay here. There's the RV sites. There's the camping registration building. That's a nice little cabin there too. I tried RV life. I used to have a pop-up camper I sold about a year ago. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, it's just, it's not for me. I much prefer to just pack up my uh, camping hammock or tent and just go out to a site and camp out. I'm not gonna get too lost here. The cave tour starts in about 20 minutes. You can see a pretty nice campground here with all the amenities it looks like, electrical. Looks like they have sewage hookups at each lot here. Look, they've also got a dog park over here called the Bark Park. I'm sure they got them, but I don't see dog parks at campgrounds too often. They've got a lot of vacancy here on this side this week. And just beyond those trees, you could see Raccoon Mountain spanning all the way to about right there, I think. This is all Raccoon Mountain. Looks like they've got a nice little pool set up here too, on the ground pool. They've also got a nice bathhouse. Got some cornhole shuffleboard if that interests you. I should have come camping. Just behind the gift shop and where you sign up for the cave tours, here are the, the tent camping sites. They've also got uh, electricity, it looks like, and water hookups. There are primitive sites, I believe they're back here. I'm gonna go take a walk over there. But no one's tent camping. Come on. Here's some more tent camping sites. Got some fire pits set up with uh, electric and water hookups again. I believe the primitive sites are just ahead here and uh, seeing pretty much all vacancy. You know, it's not even that hot here. It's like perfect weather for uh, tent camping in the great outdoors. And here's the primitive sites. I'm just counting the picnic tables. There's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten or so. 
primitive sites with no occupancy this week. Maybe it's just an off week for a tent camping. I don't know. All right, there's a brief tour of the camping facilities here. I hear you, bud. Should have brought my hammock, I know. There's some more primitive sites tucked away in the trees there. That looks like a good spot, actually. Yeah, there's a perfect spot. Got some natural stone seating here around the fire pit. I'm gonna make an effort next time I'm in the Chattanooga area to bring my tent or my hammock and, and do some primitive camping for a couple of nights. I would say the temperature right now is around 75. It's, it's not hot at all. There's a light breeze coming through here right now. Might be hard to see with the glare, but you get a good idea of the layout of the campground. We're just down here. The orange are primitive sites. Green are just um, tent sites with water and electrical hookups. All the blue is RV campsites. It's a pretty nice campground here. Look, they've even got a pet raccoon over here. That's the uh, strangest looking raccoon I've ever seen. All right, we're being led to the cave, so we just walked back across the street to this old building being remodeled. And I think the cave entrance is just right here. In total, we've got about five and a half miles of trail mapped out down here, though the cave itself is at least 10 miles long. We just haven't had a chance to go to the deeper parts of the cave and safely get them mapped out. If we were to go from the main entrance here and loop all the way to the back at the Bear Dome here, that would take us four, maybe five hours of non-stop crawling and climbing through the muck and the filth of the cave just to get back there. So I hope you got some snacks packed away today because we're going to be underground a while. If we do see any critters, it's probably going to be salamanders. We might see some cave salamanders down here. They're not super, super active right now. Uh, but if we do see them, they can be easy to spot because they're on the larger side and the bright orange pigmentation makes them easy to see. That pigmentation, by the way, the orange color in their skin is their way of saying, don't eat me, I'm going to kill you. Because they're poisonous. <laughs> don't lick them. <laughs> and do we have bats in the cave? Yeah. In fact, ah, we only got one of this today. If we want to walk down this way and take a look, we got ourselves a tricolor bat over here. This guy, the little one. Yeah, that's full size too. Uh, his name is Frank Zappa. Ah. Mm. He is a tricolor bat. Oh uh, so tricolor cute. bats are incredibly tiny. Smallest bat this side of the country. One of the top five smallest on the planet. They get no bigger than 34 millimeters. So this guy, full grown, just an inch long little puffball of anger he is. <laughs> and right before the staircase, low hanging rock with a tall memory rock. There's a map of the caverns. Got a rock just above my head. We're here at a fork. You can go right or left. Well, I think the tour continues left up these man-made steps here. Please do not touch formations. There's a stalagmite right here. Now this one right here is the titular crystal palace. We call it that because of the massive amount of formations all around us, all made out of crystallized calcite. All of these formations, and the cave itself for that matter, was made just with water. Long before this cave was a hole in the ground, it was just a bunch of cracks inside the mountain. Well, I got it lit up like <laughs> Christmas in here. Check out those tiny stalactites hanging from the ceiling. Those things are hollow like a straw. And if you break one off and put it in your pocket, it's a thousand dollar fine per ounce. So I wouldn't recommend it. Also, they were just saying this column right here is over 500,000 years old. Just because you gotta love the view of the Crystal Palace down below. This is also where you get a split of the trail. These days, we take y'all down that way, marking blue. That tunnel was blasted up in the 50s, shortly after extra cave trails were discovered. 
Before that was blasted out, though, before the longer heat trails were discovered, nobody knew there was anything back that way. So initially, for the first 20 years of operation, keep tours were lame. Mm -hmm. Draw your attention. Probably going to be that bottomless pit down there, yeah? Now, Leo Lambert took notice of the bottomless pit. He figured, maybe I'll take it deeper into the cave. Grabs a lantern, grabs a friend, starts crawling down. What does he find? Rocks! <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dead end, so Lambert kind of gave up. It's a bit of a gap back there, yeah? Yep. You could probably crawl through it. Anybody want to crawl through that? <laughs> no. Wrong answer. <laughs> that is the Smith Brothers Squeeze, and at the tightest, 15 inches wide, seven and a half inches tall. Mm -hmm. So imagine trying to crawl through something that's only a little taller than my flashlight right here. No thank you. <laughs> oh look. Oh look, we spotted the raccoon of Raccoon Mountain. Right there. Got these LED lights to light your way as you're walking. I got a duck here. There we go, yeah. We got everybody. Mm -hmm. Alright. Last so one. This in the front, this pool used to be a wishing well. It isn't anymore, but back in the day when the Smith brothers were having the expanded trails developed, they just thought it'd be really fun to have a wishing well down here. So all these formations and rocks are natural, but that's just tap water from a sink on the surface. Huh? Yeah. And that barrier in front was built to keep the water held back. Uh, the Smith brothers just thought it would be really fun to let people toss coins inside and make wishes. The more money you give us, the more likely it will come true, right? Yeah. I gotta say, so far this is the smoothest walk through a cave I've ever done here. They've pretty much carved a path throughout this entire cave to make it a lot easier for tourists to visit and explore raccoon caverns. There's face crusher rock, as they say. This in the front over here, this is our reflection pool. The water inside is jam-packed with a ton of manganese which has been historically used in mirrors because of its reflective properties. <laughs> now there is so much manganese in that water that it's got an almost perfect mirror sheen. There's the reflective pool, which is only about two inches deep. I don't recommend drinking the water. Even me, a short man, has to duck in this cave. So we could either go this way, or as they say, the squeezy way. I'll take the easy way. Y'all saw the easy way. Back there you saw the breezy way, duck low, and that's the squeezy way. Oh my. Yeah! Now. That's the squeezy way. That was the breezy now, way. Of the three cave entrances to the wild tours, guess which one we take most people through? The easy way? Nope. The squeezy way? Yes. <laughs> it's partly because we like to be mean to y'all, mostly because this is a fantastic test. This right here is the tightest mandatory squeeze you gotta take on a wild tour. So if you can handle that, you can handle the rest of the tour just fine. And this one right here is not even that bad. You just crawl in your belly for a few feet, swing your legs around, stand up, you're in. Nope. We've been 300 <laughs> pound men through there before. We once took an 80 year old grandma on her birthday through that as well. Oh my God. So it's not <laughs> too bad. All right, so that was the breezy way. We're going the easy way right now. And that was the squeezy way. A big nope for me. But, I wouldn't mind camping here. Alrighty, we're back inside the Crystal Palace, everybody. All the way up there is where we started. Now, we got a couple more formation types to talk about before we continue. We got a guy right here, and a man right here. Right there's a big dude, kind of. These are called chandeliers. Basically, gigantic clusters of stalactites, capillary tubes, and draperies all growing together as a single combined formation. 
Now, unfortunately, these things do get a little too big for their bridges at times. Now, this, this one right here has got a bit of a lip, right? You see it? Mm -hmm. This one right here is starting to separate from the ceiling. If this thing gets too big and heavy, it's going to split from the top, crash down below, and when it does so, it leaves behind a bright gray case cap, like these two here. That's a case shield. <laughs> now, case shields are incredibly rare. There are over 50 thousand unique cave systems known to exist in the U.S. Out of all those caves, only 82 are known to have shields in them. You might have also noticed that drapery right there has been broken off. What happened? Well, I think it was the 80s or so, there was this teenage kid on the tour who thought he'd be real fun to jump up and slap the drape. Mm. He must have been frequently tall and strong or something because he broke off a good few feet of drape in the process. Now, we were very mad about that, kind of still are, but we also kind of have to thank him, because by breaking that drain, he sheathed off a good many pounds of wood from the shield. Less weight means it's less likely to break off anytime soon, meaning more generations of explorers can come down and appreciate our cave shield. So in a weird way, we kind of have to thank this kid for vandalism. <laughs> There's a closer look at that shield. So as he was saying, a kid in the 80s smacked those curtains and broke it. But it alleviated some pressure, so that shield will be around a lot longer. I would usually recommend standing above the bridge so you can get that as your background. Mm -hmm. That big, huge formation right there, the big white one, we call that the grandfather because of how massive and therefore old it is. All right, we're heading out of Raccoon Mountain Cavern here, passing through the Tunnel of Love, as they call it. And I think we're gonna call this one. On the way out, we got a glimpse of a giant wolf spider I guess it's about the size of the palm of my hand, but there it is. Nailed it. So with that, I've got to run. That was probably the best cave tour I've taken yet. Very easy to walk through. Not a lot of ups and downs, not too strenuous. Raccoon Mountain Caverns, highly recommend. And again, I'm dressed for the occasion. If you've enjoyed the video and you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. Smash that like. Smash. That's right. Share this out with all your friends and family. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Missed it by that much.